Breaking news. Oh, no. George Russell disqualified from the Belgian Grand Prix. That is tragic. Belgian Grand Prix is over. Yeah. Um, Massive congratulations to. Oh, wait. We don't know. Yeah. We don't know who it is. At this current moment in time, George Russell has been called to the stewards for an overweight car. After the race, the car was weighed at 798 kilos, which, as you know, is the minimum weight. 798 is the minimum weight. You yeah. know that for yeah, sure. I know that exactly. You definitely know that, yeah. which is the required weight. After this, the fuel was drained. 2.8 liters of fuel was removed from the car. Yeah. And after that, it was weighed again at 796.5. Yep. Which means he's 1.5 underweight. I know. And an underweight car does pretty much mean disqualification. Now, I was listening to Ted's notebook, and the sample they took out at 2.5 is larger than they normally do. Lewis Hamilton's car has passed, which means... It looks like we're congratulating Lewis Hamilton for winning the Belgian Grand Prix. Once again. You know exactly what's going to happen. This pod's going to go live and then the statement's going to come out. We've decided George Russell will keep the I win know. and I then know. our That's pod exactly will be out. what would fucking happen to a bit us. bit like but. how we announced this weekend was a sprint race. Look, there's <laughs> something wrong with the fucking widget on my phone. If you're like me and you didn't know what a widget even was. I've got a Womble on my phone, right? And it tells me when the races are and when the race times are, but it was completely completely wrong. It, it said there it was, does a, sprint say it was weekend. a sprint to be fair. So I got so excited on Friday for Quali, only to be crushed. The summer break is officially here. It's Among Us. Um, among? I have lost my prediction for the first time in four weeks. Sergio Perez didn't win the race. I know, and we were moments away from having our eighth uh, winner of this season, which would have completed my start of season prediction. How many drivers will get a win this season? I picked eight. Eight? <laughs> eight drivers. Oh, eight. Yeah. Did you watch Formula yeah. One last year? No. So we're not there yet, and I'm trying to figure out, you know, as, these, as it gets closer and closer towards the end, yeah. who could actually win a race? Do you actually think there's any chance of Perez winning? No. no. No, I don't. They were talking on the TV, actually, about how Perez needs to have a bit of a recalibration mm. over these next uh, three, three and a half weeks, whatever they have of. If you were a racing driver, right, and you had to reset your mind for the rest of the season over summer break, what would you do? <laughs> I would right. love to know. I feel like the worst thing you could do is be in a sim and, like, do any form of driving. I definitely think no driving. The sport itself is very different to other sports. I have to shut my eyes to imagine this because yeah, go on, go on. as a sport, you're so locked in for such a long amount of time, whereas, like, with football, you run for a bit, you have a stop bit of a breather, a you stop for 20 seconds. Goal hang for it, a little bit. Yeah, well, as you know, it's an intense two, two hours sometimes. So to relax from that, but to stay in the state, same, like, zen mode, maybe they should all go jet skiing. Interesting. All of them, in Miami Beach. See, what I think you should do is I do think you should continue racing. But I think you should just do a lower form of racing so we can beat all the nerds and nerds. feel like a fucking champion. Nerds, again. what's that? You know what I mean? You should just go what's down the local. A nerd? Just go down the local, you know, the, his equivalent to like Brands Hatch. You okay. Know? Beat all the nerds in BMWs and stuff like that. Just slap the and shit if out I can just one. feel really good again and feel like you've won something. Regain confidence. Yeah. George Russell was not very robotic in the post-race <laughs> interview, mate. He's seen the fucking vid. George Russell is a robot. Oh, I think we tried everything that we could. Um, you know, I think the car's really great at the moment. I think... Um... <laughs> yeah, and he's seen... obviously realised, shit, I need to sort it out. Do you reckon? Yeah, he was a lot more cool and like his, his answers were actually a bit you know, it was yeah. interesting for a change. Well, even though Lewis Hamilton is going to come away with the win here, Lewis Hamilton was really pissed about this. And people are saying that they obviously prioritised George. They didn't swap it back, you know. But at the end of the day, Hamilton's got the win, so it doesn't really matter. They let them race, though, didn't they? Yeah, they, they said, did go let for them it. race. Nice and clean, but go for it. This decision's quite pivotal, actually, to the standings because Russell's only two points behind Lewis. Yeah. So really, Tight. He, he could be overtaking him right now. Whilst we're on the driving standards, though, I'll just quickly say McLaren are now closing right up to Red Bull. There's only 44 points mm -hmm. between McLaren and Red Bull. So I'm pretty confident McLaren are going to win Constructors. Rachel Brooks, who is obviously the Sky F1 presenter, these guys know a lot in the paddock. They'll know exactly what's going on. They'll hear it. She thinks there'll be three driver changes by the end of the summer break. <laughs> 
I think that's a load of bull. Sorry, Rachel Brooks. I, I no, think I think quite like right. you, but um, I think it's a load of baloney to be honest. I don't think we'll see Sargent again. I don't think we'll see Perez again. And I reckon Bottas could be a surprise dropout. I don't think Perez is going in the summer break, bro. Nah, I don't think that's best but for Red Bull. What about this constructors? Are Red Bull just going to sit back and go, okay, we'll win the drivers, the constructors, we're going to lose to McLaren? With Williams, it's a no-brainer because Logan hasn't really done anything the whole time he's been at Williams, plus they're not competing for a no, championship. No. Whereas Red Bull, even though Perez isn't really doing much, Red Bull can't just chuck any fucking Tom, <laughs> Dick and Harry in the second seat and be like, there you go. How do you think Hamilton feels right now? If he's actually just got a win with Mercedes for nothing really and they've won two and they were, they were actually amazing. Mercedes were so quick this weekend. Strategy was insane. How do you think he feels? Because the Mercedes is getting better and better. They've won three of the last four races. And he's going to Ferrari next year. Yeah, I think... Um I think Mercedes are at a point where like they kind of want like Lewis to probably win more races than George for this season just as a send off because like you can't forget like this season like we're living it right so mm. it is what it is but when you then think that like actually you know this these last three seasons have been like a massive piece of history in Formula One massive. with Max coming out of nowhere winning three championships Mercedes being absolutely nowhere McLaren coming through these last three years have been bonkers yeah. for an F1 fan to have lived through right so Lewis moving to Ferrari, another big historic moment. Toto's going to want to send Lewis out on a high with a few more wins. So if he gets prioritised over George, I understand that. Yeah, I, I see it from that point of view. But I, I don't know. I think it's probably more likely the other way around. Why? Because like Lewis is leaving and they need Russell to become their face of Mercedes, right? I reckon a lot of it for sponsorship. They need Russell winning races right now. Because for the team, they need that. They, they need him they winning next year. They need a new face. Year. They need a new winner. They need it now or next he year will they're going to the lose face, half though. their sponsors. <laughs> he will be because they've got no one else. He couldn't bring anyone else to the team. That's on the grid at the moment besides like Max or maybe a couple others. Who could be the face of Mercedes? Right. Georgie's British. He's got yeah. big blue eyes. Mercedes has got blue going on. You know, He's just like, he's like the Oli Berman. Or the Charles Leclerc of Mercedes, I'd mm. say. So George has to fill that spot no matter what. I'm just, we've got it, the highlights on in front of us playing in silent. I'm just looking at that top seven and I can quite honestly say that at this point in the season going into the summer break, we've actually just had a race. Actually, there's a stat for it. That is since 2016, that race had the closest finish between the top three. And I remember saying off the first lap, like, wow, we actually now have four cars four different teams that are competing and we really did we had mercedes ferrari mclaren mm. and red bull actually fighting after sitting through two and a half years of one car it's great 20 man. seconds ahead it's the it's the netflix effect i think do you think yeah yeah i do uh yeah i don't there's, want to i don't want to go into conspiracy but there's still a little bit stuff, of but... training trains drs trains i think maybe like just rip DRS out right now and see what happens. Well, they're losing it next year, aren't they? What about just take it out mid-season? I, I don't think you can do stuff like that. Otherwise, Why maybe not? they would. Surely it's just a button. <laughs> You've got all these grand ideas which you think would be great. <laughs> maybe they would on like a different... The JIA is yeah, speaking. No. The JIA, yeah. <laughs> I want to know whether Jake George the Scrutineer. Jake the Scrutineer. Mate, anything would go. Going around with a fucking toilet I... brush and putting it between the wings. Oscar Piastri nearly ran down his um, guy in the pits, oh didn't he? Oh my God, yeah, the he did. The person holding that... That guy actually pretty much stopped that F1 car. Those That's guys... At the front end of the F1 car, the most fearless fucking guys yeah. in the world. Yeah, because you have to stand there holding that thing, mm. knowing full well they're going to hit it. Yeah. And your job is to push them straight up. So no matter what, you're in a firing line, really. Yeah. So uh, to be fair, Oscar probably felt a bit bad for that. He probably did, but that guy, I'm sure Oscar would just chuck him a calm little 10K. Just shh, shh, shh. <laughs> Do you reckon? Everything was all right. Yeah. You Do reckon your wrists feel okay? Yeah, good. That's 10 grand. Do you think Fernando Alonso's been handing out any envelopes recently? Because it seems to be going a little bit quiet around the uh, Alonso hype train. I think Fernando has, uh, you know, I think he's playing it cool. Would you? How do you see his summer break? I see him very, very chill, very cool, you know, <laughs> maybe pop down to his karting track, a few laps. Nice. Again, beat everyone, make yourself feel good. Come back to F1 refreshed. Aston Martin have really uh, fallen off the map this year and it's quite harrowing, really. Do you remember the first episode of um, Drive to Survive with Lawrence Stroll looking like the villain yep. and throws the party in yep. there? 
it looks seems so good and now it just seems so dead yeah it is a shame actually but i think they're gonna they're just investing like i think 2026 whole new thing adrian newey yeah 2026 adrian newey they'll be all over it how weird is it by the way seeing gunther do post-race interviews like i know everyone loves him and i know he's great and i think he's amazing but it's so strange to me that this was like a team principal this was like someone who two years ago or less than that was in charge of an actual team and now he's standing there interviewing the driver mm. after the race it's amazing that you can tra transition like that i mean like bernie collins has come from strategy in hey i think Roof's he fucking, done the same i think he fucking loves it I think, I think he loves it too. The stress of being a team principal, especially for a team like Haas. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Now he can come to the race weekends, have a few fucking drinks, yeah. chill out, talk a bit of spiel on camera, get paid nicely and go home. Yeah. What a dream. What a dream. Same with Ruth Buscombe. Yeah. Strategist must be so stressful. Yeah. Now she can show up, talk about what she loves True. on camera and, uh, you know, sunbathe. I do want to extend my appreciation specifically for the Sky team, because I think they are actually really, really good mm. at what you do. And to see Natalie, Naomi, and Bernie up there, like three women on their own in the paddock broadcasting to the world, that was pretty cool to see. Yeah. You probably didn't see that, you know, like 10 years ago. No. So um, love that. And Bernie's so good because she knows so much. Yeah, no, Bernie is amazing. And she's got better every week. Brundle gave some incredible insights. I do feel like the Sky team is perfect. They Brundle, uh, some insane insights. Brundle drove around the circuit as well in an old F1 car. Yeah, before the race. Which was so it was so cool to see. But you could hear where he was like being well tentative. He didn't want to like put the fucking wheel... the pedal down just in case if i ever get a chance in an f1 car i am absolutely going foot to the floor i'll give it a whirl once you will die no no big big long straight you would because you wouldn't i, I don't think you'd warm your tires up <laughs> i think i would just see you straight in the graph it's gonna happen one day one day i will get to drive an f1 car i believe in it i i, I fully believe that it will happen On it's the a pod. shame that it takes so long surely it's like he's under breaking news oh, no. george russell disqualified from the belgian grand prix that is tragic for a guy who's only had a handful of race wins this would have only been his third or fourth race win. yeah and the new winner is lewis hamilton i mean it's like the oscar win not really the way you want to win a race no to be honest, but it's another one in the bag, another dub. Oh, now just imagine if Oscar had got Hamilton. He was so close to him at the end so as well. Close, he took close. five seconds out in yeah. two laps. We need to figure out how many races are left this season. So I'm going to just take a little peek on the app. You got anything to say? I think, well, we're, we're about halfway through, aren't we? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten races left to go. Wow. There's, there's a room for movement there. That is easily room for McLaren to clinch the world title. So that's 270 points potential for one driver if they won all the races, right? How come Zach Is Brown didn't get a tattoo win? of Oscar's win, by the way? Oh. Oh, that's going to be a sore subject. That's a bit of a strange one, actually. Oh. I mean, I heard how Oscar celebrated the win, which uh, his flight was delayed. He played chess, or Monopoly, I think, on the flight home. With Alban. Got home at 5am, and then Lando wouldn't even get a McDonald's with him. It, Oscar got a McDonald's with Alex Alba and a couple others, but Lando just decided not to join in on the on the old Mackey's fun. Yeah, I, I get it from Lando's point of view. There, I think Lando would be a bit like, oh, you know, it's tough because as an outsider, you want these people to be best friends, but they are still battling. You right. know, they have to be as friendly as they can, but. It is what it is. Yeah, it is, um, what it is. So we've got 10 races left this year, mate. And we've got some bloody good ones coming up. We've got Netherlands coming up. Love Zambor. If Max the doesn't win that, bro, if Max doesn't win that, that's going to be outright chaos I think from his fans Max is gonna have a tough summer break I think because he's he's gonna be in his own head a little bit like what what on earth has happened then we've got Monza straight line speed again so the cars will be set up fairly similar to Spa I think love Monza less downforce as a Jean, the huge straight tight tight as hell oh anyone could crash God. on that and anyone could win on no, that no that's I got think. Ferrari written all over it I do you think? think yeah I think I think Ferrari we would have said will Perez last year. tell you what why don't we go through the races left and we'll say which team we think will win each one Netherlands I think Max brings it back I I'll think say he's Red Bull fe there as well, feeling yeah. the hype Italy yeah. I think Ferrari there Azerbaijan Azerbaijan um, you said Ferrari yeah maybe Ferrari again Singapore. Mercedes. You think Mercedes, Singapore? Mercedes, yeah. Really? It's a big race for them, isn't it? With All right. their sponsors. Alrighty then. What about um, United States? 
Dakota. McLaren. Lando Norris. Really? Yeah, Lando Norris takes that. Nice. Mexico. Well, that could be the chance. That's where Checo gets it, right? (laughs) That could be your chance for your eighth win. Maybe that's where Perez sneaks it. Vegas. Whoever F1 wants to win. Whichever's best for Netflix. Qatar. Uh, um, I think we get a rogue one in Qatar, you know. Piastri. He won really? the sprint there. Now he's going to win the, the the race there. Uh, mate, can you imagine, right, if it came down to the fucking wire again, like 2021 mate, flashbacks, could. Lando Norris, Max Verstappen, Abu Dhabi. Four drivers. It's on. Max, Lando, Piastri and Russell. Well, they're all within and about Hamilton. two points of each other. Any of them could win at the final race. It would be bumper cars, mate.